Landscape lighting has become more and more popular over the years, but what kind of lights should you consider using? Has technology gotten that much better? In this video, we're going to cover this and much, much more. So let's go! Hey everybody, Kevin Fontaine, Outdoor Inspiration. So glad you could be with us today. On our channel, we provide all sorts of tips and information and ideas just to help create and inspire your outdoor spaces. We want to transform your outdoor spaces. So whether it be about plants or landscape design or new products that are coming out to the market that deal with the outdoor living, we uh, want to talk about those with you and share those ideas with you. And today we're talking about lighting. Sweet. Can't wait to talk about this. So if you're new here, consider subscribing so you can get inspired with us. Um, a little bit about me, I'm formally trained in outdoor lighting. Um, you know, years and years of practicing lighting as a trade with our landscape business has allowed us to get an experience level that we're comfortable with. And once I was comfortable, we started an outdoor lighting and audio business called Bolt Outdoor Lighting. And we then went into how can I increase my design techniques and abilities. So we've been through formal training through the um, Association of Outdoor Lighting Professionals, which is a national uh, outdoor lighting governing body that mandates technique and design skills and shows you the right way to do professional lighting. And then the other place we've been formally trained is the International Landscape Lighting Institute. We'll put those descriptions and links down below. So today, let's talk about fixtures. You know, what fixtures should I or you be choosing in your next landscape project? It could be for your home, or it could be to light up your landscape, right? So let's go over some of these. Um, so you've all been familiar with uh, the normal landscape lighting fixtures. You've got tr traditional spotlights and up lights, they're called. Um, typically, they're gonna be drop-in which just means uh, you're gonna have a lamp that, an LED lamp that drops in. And this is very convenient. So <clears throat> the lamp is cheaper than the fixture typically. And so if this goes out, you can simply replace it. Another cool thing is you can change your design just by changing the lamp. So you can go in there and make a tighter beam spread. You can up the lumen, you can lower the lumen. You can switch the Kelvin. You can put a color bulb in here. So it's very, um, uh, kind of like a Swiss Army knife of uh, lighting design, all in this one fixture. So it's really nice. This is an MR16 fixture. So that's the size of the bulb. It'll give you a three diode LED lamp. This is a typical wash light. So this is a, another drop-in fixture. Very heavy, made out of a uh, brass material. Um, this comes off, the face plate will come off, and then you put your lamp inside. It can take a bipin, which is a smaller uh, lamp, or you can put a, an MR16 in this one. So it um, has that really nice diffusion glass, frosted glass on the front to really spread the light out. So this is great for signage, and it's great for short spacing so you can be not too far away but get a wider area so it's very convenient and so this we're picking these like tools in the shed sometimes you need a hammer sometimes you need a screwdriver depending on your job your project is why we choose different light fixtures in our projects we still use drop-in bulbs today um, now over the years, it's progressed into integrated fixtures now, so we have a, a lot more offerings out there available to us. There's uh, integrated fixtures you'll see at stores that you frequent. Um, ours happen to just be, be coming from commercial lighting vendors. So um, this is an integrated fixture. It's typically about the same size as a drop-in. No huge difference there. The difference is um, the lamp is integrated inside the fixture housing. This is still field serviceable. We can pop the top and just change out a light board and then just like the lamp. So the convenience factor is there for maintenance. And with integrated fixtures, 
typically you're a, you're a little bit more limited on the wattage so you have to kind of choose a certain wattage range with the drop-in you have more flexibility uh, integrated line is going to be more efficient so this will actually use less power the same wattage as this wattage will it's just the efficiencies built in to this uh, technology so we're running four watts let's say they were both four watts I'm going to use less actual volt pulls off your power uh, with the integrated than you would with drop-in um, these also efficiencies built in for thermal efficiencies so this will dissipate heat better why is that okay well thermal you know there's three things that kill lights there's uh, how hot the fixtures get there's water in intrusion and then there's pests and dirt intrusion so those are the three main things we come across in when we repair and service other people's lighting systems so you have the lamp that drops in the reservoir so lamps get hot you know this is your heat source here so it gets hot and it wants to let go of that heat um, and the lamp provider in this case has done a good job of drilling through and making these nice air channels but what happens when you cover the lamp where's the air channels getting you then you're closing in all that airflow so you've just eliminated the design feature that the manufacturer the lamp created to dissipate heat it's trapping in the heat so now it relies on the outside to slowly dissipate that heat off so let's look at a integrated fixture so instead of trapping the heat in the manufacturer has developed fins just like we had fins in the lamp source in the drop-in we have the thermal protection management on the outside where it counts so that wind can draw through this fixture and help dissipate that heat you've also got heat elements of the driver which is now exterior so this is a stake that goes in the ground so this is one component of heat that's sunken into the ground for further thermal heat management and the inside where the actual diodes are produces some heat but it comes out this lens plate pretty nicely in combination with that body built-in thermal management it's just more efficient so you're getting a, a cooler operating fixture that's simply going to last longer back to the wash light you know you have this wash light and here's an integrated wash light you can see the difference already the size now um, wash lights and integrated um, as we get into integrated fixtures you're getting smaller so what does that help us do well it helps us hide the fixtures better typically you don't want to see the fixture um, in the landscape you want it hidden so all you see is the result so it's great to have smaller fixtures now so we can hide them in the landscapes here's another integrated fixture that's super teeny so we can put this in pockets of stone we can put it on a little mini stake and highlight that little garden art feature or put it above a trellis that you walk through shining down um, just hundreds of applications you can achieve with that fixture here's another integrated fixture that we never could do back in the day this is a all-in-one fixture look at the size of that two inches can be put down into a decking material could be flush mounted down into concrete or stone and we've got nice illumination wherever we want it in our uh, lighting designs so back in the day we had to rely on larger fixtures to get results that we're getting today much easier um, we still use drop-in fixtures today and we still uh, migrate those with integrated it just depends on the lighting scene and the lighting design technique we're trying to utilize at the time here's a big old honkin par 36 drop in look at the amount of diodes so this is a six diode so you can imagine it's going to be able to produce 
lots of lumens to get way up for us. So sometimes we need this powerhouse to really drive lumens, say in a very tall mature tree or a super tall column at a commercial building. Um, we need to get more diodes in our lighting. So this is again LED, but it's a drop-in. Serviceability is really nice. It has just a quick cover. Change that lamp out and um, just super nice. Um, but it is big, big and bulky. So we got to decide if that's appropriate to use in the right setting. So what are some other things to consider um, as you talk about fixtures and you know, you're going to choose your wattage, proper wattage, um, which can di be dictated by what you're lighting up. So what are you lighting up first and then compare that with the lumens that that wattage is going to provide for you. So a lot of times with housing and structures, they're white or they're gray or they're very light material colors. Well, your lighting is going to refract and reflect, bounce right off of that light surface just nice. If you're dealing with a dark house, you know, dark woods, a darker color, your lighting is going to get absorbed more. So you need more lumens for that, for that to show up properly sometimes. So it's all about the source the, uh, that you're lighting. You have to make those decisions about wattage. Beam spread is, a, is a, a factor. The tighter the beam spread, the more intense the light. The wider the beam spread, the more refracted and softer it's gonna be for you. Um, and then we get into Kelvin colors and typically, you know, your warm whites are typically uh, 2700 and 3000, even 3200 range. And um, we'll put a link in the description to some of these schematics that you can consider choosing in your next lighting project. So a couple other cool things that are coming to market. Like I said, we still use drop-in and both integrated. We use them both depending on our need. Um, but just really neat like table toppers like this with the fake flame. Um, we're doing uh, those little lights, the fairy lights. We're starting to use fairy lights on our systems and we're really pushing the boundaries today. There's so many cool things that you can do with lighting and it makes such a peaceful, warm, inviting space when you have proper lighting in your area. You know, those patios, those decks, um, those dark spots that need to be traveled safely. Lighting is perfect for that steps, staircases, you need safe stepping. So always consider using the lighting available to properly get you where you need to go, right? From point A to point B. But you know, the main functionality of, of lighting and Blake's got a fixture here, once again, safe stepping. So these are little puck features, puck fixtures that actually get mounted to say a banister or a railing and it puts the light down so you can safely step in the right directions. But, you know, the main feature is bringing you an emotional value, an emotional sense of security and invitement. Invitement? Inviting atmosphere. So that's really what lighting does for us and our, get, and our clientele is brings them a, an emotional uh, peace of mind and they feel proud of their spaces in their home when they see it all nicely lit up. It helps with security, it deters uh, potential unwanted um, guests to, you know, kind of check out your property. We don't want that. Lighting has several benefits. And a lot of times with uh, low voltage lighting, if you put in a quality system that's done by a licensed professional, you typically are going to get that money back when you go to sell the home. A lot of these new home buyers go drive by these houses at night, checking out the neighborhood, seeing what it's like at night. They'll see your house lit up perfectly. And um, that's just going to give you more value in the end. So typically we like to say that you're going to get most of your lighting investment back if it's done properly and if it accentuates everything really nice. But it, like I said, if you have any comments or suggestions, um, please comment. We'd love to answer your questions. And until next time, all things grow with love.
and we'll see you in the next video.